Hello, my name is Kamen Bandev and I'm a front-end developer working on Kendo UI Mobile at Telerik. And today I'm going to help you enter the dark forest of mobile browser bugs and keep your head on. You will need it later when you delve, de you, when you delve deeper alone. Smartphones changed the web landscape. They introduced smaller screens and weak processors and with their exponential growth forced us, the developers to provide special treatment, treatment for them. We grew to love them and support them. But it's a love-hate relationship. We love them and they hate us. Last year, there were at least three major smartphone operating systems on the global mobile landscape that roughly amount for about 80% of the market. If we count Symbian, the number grows above 90. The good news is that all the major players are using the WebKit engine. And the bad news, the engine and manufacturer implementations vary a lot. As you can see from the table above, features that are supposed to work everywhere are actually not supported on some platforms. Every operating system ven vendor decides to what to include in their WebKit distribution, thus leading to, to such inconsistencies. Only the BlackBerry Playbook OS 2 supports every feature from the ones listed above, but its market share is most likely below 5%. So, to be sure that everything works as you intended it to, test everything you create on every device you can get your hands on. But the code hard truth is far worse. Even on supported mobile platforms, one of these features can be close to unusable. How many of you created a web application and ran into strange and or even impossible issues that forced you to abandon the original approach? <laughs> Some of you, <laughs> okay. Issues like slow performance, broken rendering, missing events, freezes and crashes, plague the mobile web development world and prey upon our time and our money. The most irritating ones are the performance issues. Without hardware acceleration, custom scrolling and animations grind to a halt. Fortunately, all that is needed to speed up the rendering is a 3D transform. A carefully placed WebKit transform translates Z0. Such transform triggers hardware acceleration on this element and its rendering gets offloaded to the mobile GPU. However, Translate Z is becoming damnation as much as salvation. Welcome the new Zoom One of the mobile web. Among the many issues caused by hardware acceleration are these. Transforming bigger elements can lead to bad performance and can break the rendering of WebKit masks, especially on Android. Sometimes a 3D transform is not enough to trigger hardware acceleration on some platforms. And Transforms also may lead to artifacts and can break form elements on Android versions before Jelly Bean. And finally, 3D transforms do not work in Android 2, but what else works there? I'll now go over these one by one. First, we'll start with the performance issues. Imagine this scenario. You have a rather large list of images on a page with a custom scroller. To speed up the scrolling, you apply Translate Z on the list. Instead of speeding up, the scrolling gets much worse and you can actually see part of the page is drawing when you scroll by. The issue you've just run into is called max texture size. All graphics chips have this texture size limit and when you reach it, your texture is split into several smaller textures which are rendered separately, resulting in more calculations and generally worse performance. This is especially visible on high resolutions as on iPad 3 as there the graphics chip has to move four times more pixels per texture than on previous models, even though it's slightly faster. Even though the max texture size on iPad 3 is four times bigger, it still covers only slightly more than the screen. To avoid this, you need to use smaller elements that are sure to fit into the texture size. In this case, apply the transform on the list items instead of on the whole list. For we already saw that most native smartphone browsers are WebKit-based. This may change in the future with uh, Internet Explorer 10 and Firefox Mobile advancing, but now it drives the usage of some proprietary WebKit functionality. 
for instance, WebKit masks. WebKit masks are just images with alpha transparency which apply a non-rectangular clip mask on their element. They are supported in all mobile WebKit-based browsers with the exception of all BlackBerry OS, OS 7.0 versions, in which they don't work at all. How we missed that escapes me. Fortunately, they do work OK in 6.0 and 7.1. However, most issues with WebKit masks you will probably see in Android again. 3D transforms and masks just don't get together there. An example, applying WebKit backface visibility on a masked element in Android 4 results in a colored rectangle. On the other hand, applying WebKit transfer translate Z on a single mask element breaks all the masks on the page. But wait, there's more. If you apply translate Z zero on a container, the masks inside it will work, but the rest of the mask will break. And the best part, all this may vary between Android versions. So, to avoid breaking WebKit masks in Android, you need to take extra care where you apply them, and preferably don't mix them with transforms. With the advancement of HTML mobile applications and the usage of hardware acceleration for better responsiveness, the graphics chip is eating smartphone batteries somewhat faster. In an attempt to avoid that, manufacturers and operating system vendors are limiting the CSS properties that uh, trigger the hardware acceleration. You probably heard that for iOS 6, but Samsung did something similar in Galaxy S3, though limiting more properties. Turned out, 3D transforms are not enough to trigger hardware acceleration there. After some testing, we were able to do so with a transition of the transformed element. And it should run at least a little, even for one millisecond. It's ugly, but it works. So to be able to turn hardware acceleration in your web application on a Samsung Galaxy S3, apply a one millisecond or shorter transition on the transformed element. But make sure you don't activate it accidentally. For instance, you can use WebKit transition property to limit it. Several times, I've run into a hard to reproduce problem on older Androids 2.3. It's really hard to reproduce, but uh, it usually happens when you have transforms applied in a web view. Then you open a new activity with another web view in it, and then later close it. The transforms on the, on the page afterwards are frozen. They don't get updated on screen, even though the page under it, under, underneath works OK and fires events. So if you run into this issue while testing your web application, be sure to remove all transforms before opening the new activity, and then you can return them again. Almost all modern mobile browsers included support for HTML5 form elements like date and time pickers. For instance, HTML5 form elements were introduced in iOS 5 and BlackBerry OS 6.0. However, the default Android browser didn't join the party. Google introduced Chrome as the default browser on Nexus 7, but mostly, most of the Jelly Bean phones out there are still using the old Android browser, which still doesn't have support for HTML5 form elements. Even the Nexus 7 web view used in PhoneGap is no exception. This leads to a rather unfortunate conclusion. If you really want to use HTML5 form pickers, you will have to fall back to external libraries for, for them, or use inputs of type text with some kind of validation. You may have noticed on Android's native browser that when you place an HTML input on a page and focus it, you can't style the focus state. This happens because it is not actually a state. Android renders an, another input, this time native, on top of the one in the page. This fake native element processes your typing and sends it back to the page. You can easily observe that if you know that the fake, fake input doesn't position correctly when the original element is transformed. Hideous as this is, you can avoid this in Android 4 for a price. You can use the little known CSS property WebKit user modify to remove the fake input on focus. However, this workaround does have a trade-off. Custom keyboards like swipe for instance, stop working completely. So you must carefully, carefully weigh the pros and cons of using that. 
In Android 2, the solution gets even uglier. The CSS property is not supported. So the only thing you can do to avoid the second input is translation of the input container to get it out of the screen and then return it back with absolute positioning, <laughs> thus removing the fake element. <laughs> Don't translate the input in itself, or there will be dragons. The negative eff effects of such workaround are even worse, ranging from broken non-English keyboards through most HTML inputs turning to type text and to the inability to type the number nine. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> Fortunately, all this mess is fixed in Jelly Bean, both in the default browser and in WebView. And we just have to wait a few years for everyone to upgrade. If you're building a single page web application, you will surely need a way to navigate in it. Unfortunately, the history app is not consistently supported by all WebKit browsers. For instance, it doesn't work properly in iOS up and including 4.3. Well, it should work for newer, newer versions. Interesting, though, the history app works OK in Android, too, contrary to everything else. The good stuff's there. It is broken in Android 3 and 4. And additionally, hashes are also partially broken in Android 4+. The address bar doesn't get updated every time, while the location do update internally. To avoid this mess, better don't use the history app for mobile apps until it matures. Use hashes instead, they are mostly harmless. iOS is no safe haven from strange and obscure browser bugs. One example of that is the input label bug. On every other platform, if you, click on, if you click on a label which is associated with an input, the input gets focused. However, in iOS, this is not true. Nothing happens when you click the label, unle unless it has an on-click event. Actually, you can skip the event. An empty on-click attribute is all that it takes. Even better, if you have a container around all your inputs and labels, you can add the empty on click attribute to it, and all labels will suddenly start working. The next issue is not really, really an issue. It's, it is part of how modern browsers work. When you change the CSS style on an element with JavaScript, the browser doesn't hurry away to actually change it, but instead waits for some cycles for more such changes, then groups them and sets them in one go. However, you sometimes need to force the browser to apply the changes before doing something else. For instance, if you show an element and set a transition and some styles after it, they all will be set at the same time, and the transition won't run. So to avoid that, you can request the element's computer style for the property you're setting. Or you can check one of the element's dimensions, like offset width, for instance. And the browser will be forced to apply the changes immediately in order to return you the correct results. You can now safely trigger the transition, and it will run. That was it. We are back on, in the open and managed to escape the dark forest labyrinth of mobile browser bugs, barely stumbling into a dozen of them. But the forest is deep and hungry and inviting. And we know that we'll have to venture alone into it at some point. Make sure you're prepared for everything and armed with sharp weapons, like patience and creativity. Or you can bring, bring a friend along for a guide, like can do I mobile. Either way, know that every problem has a solution. You just haven't found it yet. Thank you. <laughs> if you have questions. Could you tell me a little bit more about the push state issues in Android 3 and 4, please? The push state issues? Yeah. Well, they mostly don't work. Again, the, <laughs> the, um, the address bar is not updated, but uh, location changes internally. So if you click refresh, refresh you'll be going somewhere else. And, uh, okay. It won't work. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you for some interesting tricks. And uh, I was wondering, uh, as a developer of Kendo UI, uh, how do you go about to find all these things? Do you have like 100 devices on a wall, or how does that work? Well, we have about 20 devices, different, mostly Android, because they have most uh, cha changes between them. Yeah. And dif in different versions, different things break. So. I'm about to start a device lab, an open device lab in Malmo. And uh, we're just a bunch of guys collecting devices and then sharing them so that you can come and test your website uh, on a bunch of devices at the same time. And I think I would just encourage people in the audience, if you also uh, feel they uh, need to do the same thing, then you know, start your own device lab or check it out. Maybe there's already a device lab in your city. Uh, because I, I mean, this is awesome, and it's great that you're actually doing this research. Uh, by ourselves, but I think many of us developers, we don't just, we don't have the, we don't own 20 devices, and we're not going to yeah, pay uh, for the 20 devices. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your tips, and I was uh, also an additional question. Just um, these tips are they just inside of this uh, presentation, or is, do you, have you collected these uh, tips somehow or in others? Uh, there are several demos in the demonstration. You can uh, find them on the site. And uh, we don't have a repository for them, unfortunately. We do have some workarounds integrated in Kendo UI Mobile. They're in, they're in PhoneGap? Phone Wiki? Yeah. OK, great. More questions? Thanks. Uh, what was the activity we're referring to while well, talking about Android browser thing? The activity? When, uh, sorry? It was the Microsoft TAC uh, scanner. It, uh, it is a, it's a kind of QR code scanner, which uh, scans for Microsoft TAC uh, codes. And it later opens a uh, web view, which when you close it, the whole uh, Application freezes. All right, so it was uh, about web views. The no, it doesn't happen if you don't open the web view. All but right. uh, I didn't reproduce it consistently with only opening a web view, so I said that it's not hard to reproduce. Thanks. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so thank you very much.